My name is Wayne and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to look at the first clearance issue we have with our front suspension and I think you're going to be surprised at what I found. So you're probably wondering how can you be checking for clearance issues without the wheels and tires? Well I obviously do have the wheels and tires but I haven't even put them all on yet and I want that to be a video focusing just on those. But this video I want it to go out first so it's more chronological in time but I want to show you what I have found. I mean I'm perfectly transparent about everything about this car. I'm not trying to hide or sugarcoat or even bash Hotchkiss in any way. The whole point is there's a clearance issue that I'm having. And with that being said, I didn't even find it first. I would have when I checked, but. So one of the beauties about all the social media that I've done, YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook, is meeting and making a lot of contacts. Well, one person reached out to me and told me that they tried running the Hotchkiss upper, the Hotchkiss upper control arms as well but they ran into a clearance issue. So they hey, told me, make sure that. you double check this before you go and put your new wheels and tires on because you don't want to mess them up. So with that being said, before I even did anything, I put the tire on with that in mind and checked and sure enough, I'm gonna have the same problem. So let's go into the car and I'll show you what I'm talking about. All right, so here we are. We're looking at the driver's side wheel and the upper control arm. And this is the point I'm talking about, the rear lock nut, jam nut for the adjuster. And it comes, it'll hit the inner wheel up of my wheel at full lock. Right now it's resting, so the car is, the tire is drooped down as well. But I'm going to rotate the tire by hand and I'll show you what happens. So right there, all right, so it's still, I'm not going to make it make contact, but you can see, I mean, I just have a finger width away, and if I was to turn it all the way by hand, it would be hitting, so that is the problem. Man, does this stink. Now, to answer some of your questions, like wheel specs, well, these front wheels are five and a quarter inches of backspacing. It's a little more than what most people run, but I'm sure it wouldn't hit at five inches, which is probably the most standard um, aggressive backspacing that most people do, but I know some people will run five and a quarter and it works okay, but with this upper control arm, with this big feature, this adjusting nut, it is going to hit at full lock. So that's not going to work. Yeah, I can't tell you how bummed I am be having this issue but I can't let it get me down too much because when you're trying to do stuff that's not stock pushing the boundaries a little bit you know I'm gonna be running some bigger wheels and tires you're gonna have some problems I wasn't expecting to have this problem and I'm super bummed because I really wanted to run those Hotchkiss upper arms I mean I think it's really one of the fixture piece in their entire kit and I'm not gonna be able to do that now so I was thinking long and hard about what I'm going to do, but we'll talk more about that in a little bit. But again, I wanted to touch base on this issue. So again, I was just showing you when the tire in the lower control arm is at full droop. And that's worst case scenario because the angle is even greater when it's down like that. If the car, um, the, if the car was on the wheels or if I jacked up that tire to be simulate ride height and turn it all the way, it actually clears. So a scenario where I could come into play in real life is if you're at full lag, you go through a hard corner, the inside tire comes unloaded, doesn't come off the ground, but the suspension travels upwards and you come close to making contact or you do make contact. And I just am not going to take that risk. Not going to do it. If it's going to hit right now, like I showed you, you know, I'm not going to risk damaging wheels and yeah not gonna do it so too tight too close so we are going to change the upper control arms what we're gonna go with i'll show you so my new control arms just came in that's my second pair that's right so i'm gonna show you what i decided to go with so i ordered these from bergman autocraft 
And this is a factory manufacturer box, which seen better days. And looks like it took a beating. But let's open these up and see what we have. powder pin out of here. My, my first thought is packaging could definitely be better. Here's a look at the SPC Mopar adjustable upper control arm. So one of the main reasons why I went with this upper control arm is for the adjustability. Um, I really wanted to be able to adjust my camber and caster more than what you could ever do with the factory eccentric bolts when everything is all fixed. So that's why I chose this one. Now some of the drawbacks I would see with upper control arm like this is it does have its own proprietary upper ball joint so something like that it's not off the shelf and plus it's a little more difficult to swap out if you need to and one interesting fact about this upper control arm is it actually has two pieces i can only assume they do it build it this way as it's probably going to fit more than one application so one thing you, they note in the instructions, make sure that there's no gap in here once it's assembled. When you put it on the car, make sure that's all closed up. Then there is a pinch bolt on the forward facing arm because that'll allow you to lock in the degrees of your two arms. Because when this is loose, you can tweak this to get to fit in and mount to your vehicle. But then this needs to be tightened up and the the specs are all on the sheet that come with uh, the SPC control arm, so that's all there. And we'll do that last, obviously. And it has new bolts that mount it, so you're not going to use your factory eccentric bolts. And it has a spacer and these, as well as these really thick heavy-duty washers. And one thing I do like about this unit is it has these Delrin bushings as well as there's no heim joints on this piece so i really like that about it so um, and on the bushings you can see in the in the instructions so the spacer goes on the outboard side of the arm pretty simple pretty straightforward and what we'll do is we're going to just get it all in the car and once it's in the car we're going to take some reference measurements off our original arms to try to get it just close so i don't want to be a mile off while we're uh, <laughs> just driving it to get aligned right so we want to be kind of close in the ballpark and uh, go from there it does talk about having a max one inch max thread visible so wherever adjustments you want end up having it talks about trying to have equal and one inch max thread so we'll see what that ends up being and uh, so that's a basic overview of this upper control arm. That's how we'll get the Hotchkiss one out. So first thing we're gonna do is remove the cotter pin. And next we're gonna free up the upper ball joint nut. Now I'm not gonna take the nut all the way off right now. I don't want the spindle to fall. First, I wanna get these bolts and nuts out.
now with the control arm out of the way, I'm gonna use a little safety wire just to temporarily hold the spindle so we don't put any extra stress on our brake line. All right. for the rear pull. Now one nice thing about these is these are not eccentric bolts so the washer will position it in the center of the hole. And that is it. Sean. So now that the upper control arm is all in place, nothing's torqued yet, but uh, the first thing I'm going to do is get this length close to what the factory is. And I measured my factory arms about nine and a half inches, both sides. So I'm going to use my tape measure and adjust these adjusting nuts to get the arms close enough to where you can drive it and get it aligned. Now we're going to torque these two pinch bolts to 60 foot pounds. Now we're going to do the clamp leg pinch bolt to 36 foot pounds and make sure there's absolutely no gap. Now we're going to do the upper ball joint nut to 100 pounds and then put in the cotter pin. Right. 
Let's see how the cutter pin lined up. Cutter pin's in. All right, well, so everything is bolted in and torqued down to spec. And I've double checked my clearance. I have a lot more clearance now, so that won't be an issue. And uh, it looks good. And here's the driver's side all torqued in. And lastly, there's the Hashkiss unit that won't be using again. So, because this was just sticking out so far, that full lock that was just hitting the wheel and not gonna work. So, anyway, those will be for sale. You know, that was one project I really was hoping I wouldn't have to do. I mean, I didn't even expect that that could be a problem. But sometimes those things come up, and that's what you run into with aftermarket car parts, right? You just never know what is going to be around the next corner when you start putting on parts on your car that aren't stock and you're trying to really push the envelope a little bit. So that is going to be it for this video. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, please hit the like button. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe. And if you turn on the bell notification, you'll be notified each and every time I upload a new video. So we're one step closer to getting the car back on the road. I'll see you guys next time.